Hey, I have Dr. Emily Pittman with me here today. We actually first met at the Southeastern Game Bird Conference. I think I was speaking up there and she was doing that. We got to meet. But anyway, so she works with the Georgia Poultry Lab. So what exactly does the Georgia Poultry Lab do? Now, we have a lot of customers. We have a lot of viewers. I'm sorry to come from other states, but I think it would help to know some of the stuff that may be in each person's state possibly. So what is the Georgia Poultry Lab? Do? Right. So the Georgia Poultry Lab Network is the state for the state of Georgia, the official state agency, we administer the National Poultry Improvement Plan, or NPIP, okay. for the state of Georgia. Yeah. So we handle all of the testing, mycoplasma testing, salmonella testing for the state of Georgia. Uh, we do have, we do work with other state uh, laboratories right. who also can do some of that, and that would be for you know companies that do have their own labs. Right. Um, but as far as for the state of Georgia, we are the official state agency and we do also approve all the shipments in and out of Georgia. Okay, which would be for like backyard, if somebody's got a problem, what does that look like? Yeah, so for backyard owners, uh, many of our services are at no charge. Um, we do administer the NPIP program um, for a fee for private owners, right. which means basically me or one of my technicians might be coming out to your property right. to test your birds for it. Um, I, we do also necropsies for private owners, for commercial industries, and for even game bird industries. Sure. And a lot of those services are reduced cost or right. even at no charge for private owners. Okay, so you mentioned NPIP, so yes. explain to me, because I've even had people ask and I can't even really wrap my head around it yet. So what is, explain NPIP to me a little bit. NPIP is wonderful. Okay. Um, it stands for National Poultry Improvement Plan. It was founded in 1925 to help with the eradication of Salmonella pylorum or pylorum disease or bacillary white diarrhea. It was a real problem in the early to mid 1900s. It wiped out 80% of chicks that caught it. Um, it's a salmonella disease, so it does get passed down from the parents oh, to yeah. the baby chicks. Yeah. And that test is the primary reason why NPIP was founded. And that is what we call the plate antigen test. Okay. Um, NPIP has now expanded to more than just the pylorum test. We also test for other salmonellas like Salmonella gallinarum and Enteritidis are part of the NPIP program as well as mycoplasmas for chickens and turkeys and avian influenza okay. as well. Okay, so and also I was talking to um, one of your peers uh, last week, I won't say who, but I was talking to one of your peers, and it, it was talking about some of the changes that have come about with MPIP, which I think may be interesting to know what they've changed on some of this. Yeah, um, one of the bigger changes, especially for industry, is with the pylorum qualifying test. That has been changed from 300 to 150 birds. So basically when a flock reaches adulthood and they need to be qualified to become breeder chickens right. or birds, um, they have to. we only have to test about half as many birds as previously. My understanding is a lot of the other monthly testing or quarterly testing has not changed okay. much for the commercial industry. Um, however, there is an entirely new subpart that was supposed to have gone into effect for the game bird uh, populations of birds and those okay. who raise them. It's called subpart J. Okay. And because they're halfway, a bit, a little bit halfway between a private owner and industry, sure. we now have the yearly qualifying and then every 90 days we're testing for avian influenza. And that's really the biggest change because previously we were only testing twice a year or every six months for avian influenza, but we still had the PT qualifying test that we have to do. We still have to do. Okay. Is that because maybe this is being a little more prevalent so they're trying to stay on top of it? maybe doing more testing hmm. or is it just um i was not so i was not a veterinarian or yeah. with gpln but when this rule came to be part of the npip program um, my understanding is just because we are releasing them out into the environment to be hunted sure 
Um, we wanted a little bit more surveillance before those birds go out. So yeah. it's a little bit more like the commercial industry where they're constantly moving birds right, right. Um, instead of a private owner who is really just having birds on their own property yeah. and maybe going to shows or yeah. just selling hatching eggs. Yeah. Um, but I think it was a part, it was mostly because it's part of the industry, especially here in Georgia where we have so many bobwhite quail yeah. um, growers mm -hmm. that just, was a little bit neglected prior sure. to that. They didn't really fit in either the true private owner yeah. section between, or true yeah. commercial. Yeah, I got you. So. so, okay. So those are some things that would affect probably not your average commercial grower though. Right. But, but yet some of the things that, because a lot of our subscribers also were like backyard and some stuff like mm -hmm. that too. So, cool. Right. Okay, well good. So. Anyway, if you've got a problem or something you need checked out, give Georgia Poultry Lab a call. Yes. So if you go to our website, it's gapoultrylab.org. Um, if you're having sick bird issues, you can fill out the avian influenza um, hotline form, even if you just have a sick bird and you don't necessarily think it's avian influenza, or you can give us a call. Um, we can try to help troubleshoot in troubleshoot in um, other states yeah. but our primary focus is the state of Georgia one thing you mentioned was that you actually do because I said a lot of these people mm -hmm. are more than just Georgia you actually do outside of the state it's not just you don't just have to be in Georgia there's a charge right but you right. all have a pretty good reputation for having a turnaround pretty quick turnaround so right maybe worth we, it. right so we do have we do perform out-of-state testing if you are out of state it's completely fine to use our services we do have out-of-state charges yeah. for that that are a little bit that are different yeah than our in-state but if charging. you can get quicker response and things like that it just may be worth it right so yeah okay well thanks doc and uh, if there's anything they can do for you, reach out. And uh, if you got any other questions, not along these lines, because that's above my pay grade. So anyway, but you can reach out 1-800-608-3755 or alan at southlandorganics.com. Thank you.